Dr. Steve Maskin, and with me today is uh, one of my patients, uh, Natalia. Uh, Natalia has uh, been suffering from my bone gland dysfunction and dry eye, and I'm going to let her describe what she's had to live with for over the last year or two years, and uh, she'll share her story about how she overcame that with my bone gland probing. Let's start here, Natalia. How would you describe your condition before my bombing gland probing? I couldn't do anything. I kept my eyes closed all the time. I couldn't read. I couldn't drive. I couldn't watch television. I couldn't interact with my family at all. I couldn't look at my nieces and nephews when they came to my house. Could you do the simple activities of life, such as laundry, no, doing no, no. laundry, or making a cup of coffee for yourself? No, I couldn't do anything. I had to keep my eyes closed all the time. The only way I could get around was by knowing where I was, what environment I was in, so I could only stay in my own home, so I'd know which room was where and how to get to it. But I couldn't cook, and I couldn't, I couldn't make a cup of coffee. Did you essentially live with your eyes closed? A hundred percent of the time, yes. I'd only open them for moments. And what kind of how did that impact your relationship with your family and friends and your social life? Oh, it was terrible. It was it's very difficult to talk to people when you keep your eyes closed all the time. It's very antisocial, and it would make my friends and family feel very uncomfortable. Although I would tell them, please try to treat me like everything is okay, but it's difficult to talk to somebody when their eyes are closed. It's it's hard. Right. Did uh, did your friends and family understand? Did they wonder whether or not you, there was something else going on? Did they appreciate what you were going through? They, some of them really did understand, and they were very um, very supportive, but nobody knew what to do. Nobody knew how to help me, and it made them feel as helpless as I was. In fact, anything that I needed to do, anything at all, I needed somebody's help with. And so my family gathered around and my friends helped me drive me to doctors and different things but there was nothing that I could do without somebody else's help they were very supportive it was very difficult on them as much as on me now you're a young woman how about how does that affect your employment I'm unemployed because of this I can't even look for work let alone actually work because it takes eyes I, I was never trained to be a blind person and I Lived like a blind person. And what kind of work did what kind of work did, had you done? I was an executive. Um, I was actually uh, uh, an executive of a Japanese company with and the president of its U.S. US subsidiary. Um, I had traveled to Japan many times. I was in Tokyo many many times. I spent uh, many men months in Tokyo. I went to Kamakura three different times and down to Kyoto. Had many friends in Japan and. Um, I could never go back because I couldn't even get a, think about getting on an airplane to go see anybody again. So it's been a, it's been very difficult, and I've been unemployed. My husband's the only one working. It's difficult on us also because of that. What kind of therapies have you tried to get this under under control? And I, I see in front of you, you brought some uh, example of some of the things you've tried. I see ointments. I've seen drops. I've seen just an assortment of really all the therapies that are known thus far to treat dry eye and my bone gland disease, I, what, what would you comment on, on this? Well, some of these worked at first. In the beginning, I could use some of them, most of them, but over time, um, I developed reactions to everything. You can see there's just everything imaginable out here, and this is probably most, or at least a good portion of what I ever used. But ultimately, nothing ever worked. I was, at, at, at its worst point, I was using some, one of these drops every five minutes. And um, every, five, every minutes. five minutes, I was putting drops in my eyes. I couldn't keep them in long enough, and they, that wasn't good enough. And so I just kept using them, and then eventually my eyelids started to swell up, and it was extremely painful, and I had to stop everything. And then I started using serum tears, I don't have the label on this, but I started using serum tears and that also absolutely did nothing eventually. It just How long were you on the serum tears? Um, since April, of maybe May of this year, so it's now August. So now it's August, so about three months. Three months, and really with literally no effect. And I don't know if we mentioned, how long were you experiencing, I said a year, a year to two years, I guess, closer to two years or so you were dealing with this problem. That's right. It started out with the injury. I dropped a hairbrush in my eye, but over time, it turned into dry eye. I think 
probably the, some of the treatments didn't help one eye, but then I started using drops in both eyes and I just went downhill from there and it's at least a year of just agony, agony. And when you dropped the hairbrush, that was at least a year before the dry eye symptoms yeah, began? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, let's talk about the, the probing itself. Now, uh, I saw you what, about a week or two weeks ago? A week ago. Just a week ago? It was just a week ago. Okay. And let's talk about the procedure of probing, okay? Um, do you remember the applying the anesthetic ointment to your eyes? Yep. Yes. And do you remember what that, was that um, easy or, or challenging for you to, to do? No, that was, I kept my eyes closed for a few minutes. Correct. And I was fine. It right. was not a problem. So, so the, the anesthetic was applied, you kept your eyes closed, and after a certain amount of time, 15 minutes actually, we, we began the probing. How would you describe the probing uh, as a, from a patient's perspective? Well, I don't think anybody wants to be probed, but I wouldn't say that it was as bad as passing a kidney stone, which I also recently did. Um, it lasted, I think, about half an hour, if I'm not mistaken, and I, I, I know that something was happening. I could feel that something was happening in my eyes, and I did feel a little pain, but it's nothing that... Very tolerable? It was very tolerable. Yeah, it was not a problem. Could you feel the resistance in the, gla in the glands give way with, when I would probe? Yes. I could feel when you, when you would say, when you first popped them, and you would say popping, gritty, heme, I could, I could feel the different um, Sensation. sensations. Mm -hmm. um, and I could feel when the probe was going in, each time, mm -hmm. yes, I could. And yeah, and I could the feel the resistance. And, yes, and then how it gave way. Yes, mm -hmm. yep. yeah. yeah, I could feel it going through. Yeah, right. absolutely. And tell, let's talk about um, the immediate results within the first twenty-four hours. The immediate results were absolutely miraculous. At least these are my words. The next day, it was like a miracle. I, I was suddenly um, functioning like a normal human being. I had my eyes open the entire day. I, I went through an entire day of normal life like I remembered it once upon a time. I didn't use anything. I didn't, wasn't putting drops in my eyes every 15 minutes, but most five minutes, but most importantly, I had my eyes open and I just lived like a normal person again. I, I can't describe to you the feeling of going from being blind to being normal, blind and in pain and being normal. It was just, it was a miracle. It was literally a miracle. And I, I might just add, we, I just examined your eyes just a half hour time. ago, and you had, for example, the left upper lid last week when we examined you before the probing out of approximately 30 glands in the left upper lid, only three glands showed any oil when I pressed on the gland, on the lid, and today you had I would say over 25 of those glands that were showing functionality, that were functioning and secreting oil. Not only that, you may remember how tender, how tender were your lids last week before the probing? You couldn't touch them before. Um, I jumped when you touched them. Mm -hmm. I jumped when I touched them. Mm -hmm. um, now, I don't think it would matter. And today, we examine them and they're not tender at all. No, no. So we, they're not no longer tender, plus, you have gone from about three glands, or what we would call a complete distal, distal obstruction, complete glandular obstruction, to now where the glands are flowing and functional, compatible with your improvement in symptoms. It sounds like it is, yeah. Yeah, I can't look at my own glands, but I can tell you that I feel a heck of a lot better. Outstanding. So what are some of the things you're able to do now? Well, I could do chores around the house. Um, I can read the boxes in front of me, what's on them. I couldn't read labels on boxes um, uh, or anything. So that's interesting. So you, well now of course you can open your eyes and keep them open to be able to read. Have you noticed any change in your vision at the same time? No, actually my vision's fine. Mm -hmm. um, it hasn't, it was fine before and thankfully it's just as good as it was. Okay, and sometimes patients will report an improvement in vision, mm -hmm. so that's why I asked, okay. and. Uh, all right, so you start, you, you can read the labels, yeah. and uh, what other activities? You're interacting with your family? Yeah, I'm interacting with my family. Uh, I used to talk to people on the phone with my eyes closed, 
because I would just stare into space and it would be so painful. So I taught myself how to talk on the phone with my eyes closed. I don't need to do that anymore. You can see here I'm speaking with you like a normal person. I probably should blink more often, but that's something I can train myself to do. Um, but normally we would have been having this conversation with me with my eyes completely closed. Right. Completely closed yeah. the whole time. You're making coffee for yourself? Yeah, I had coffee this morning. I made it myself. Taking <laughs> care your own laundry? Did the laundry this morning, did household chores. I expect I'll be looking for work pretty soon. Excellent. Um, it's pretty amazing given where I was a week ago. I was in complete despair and thinking I would have to go on some sort of disability. I didn't even know how to do that. Um, somebody had told me once, well, why don't you just get tapes and listen to music? And I said, wait, let's talk about how do you get something? To get something, you have to get your eyes open first. Even if it's to like look at a list of music or to go to the store, it takes eyes to get to do the getting. You take a lot for granted. Yeah, a lot. And now I, I think I can start taking things for granted again. Although I never will. Good for you. Never will. Did you? Did we uh, inject steroid through little microtubes after we opened up the gland? We opened up the gland with probes. Right. And you remember if we injected the steroid? Yes, yeah. I remember the steroid was the last mm -hmm. thing that was done. There were, I think there were four. There was the opening and then the spreading and then the cleaning out. So we opened up we opened up the glands with the probing. Then we dilated the glands right. with the dilator. And then we expressed material with the uh, expressor instrument. And then we injected the steroid. Right, right. Mm -hmm. And that was fine. I had no, no reaction to the steroid. No bad reaction, I should say. So, if, for example, in another year or so, you needed a you needed to have a probing done again, um, with your experience, would that be any difficulty for you? No, it wouldn't. I hopefully I'd drive myself to the doctor's office this uh -huh. time. <laughs> and would you recommend this treatment for your friends or family? Yes, to anybody, who, especially who suffered to the extent that I have, or even anybody who might be getting to the level that I was. We don't. I don't think I would ever want anybody to suffer or to have to live the kind of life that I was living, completely disabled and unable to open her eyes. I would recommend this to anybody. You can get your life back. And that's what I was really looking for, was for some so an ophthalmologist to give me my life back. One, one of the ophthalmologists gave me some wipes, some eyelid wipes, and said, here you go, you'll learn how to live with this. And I thought, how can I live with this? I'm not alive. I'm I'm barely functioning. Um, handicapped. Completely handicapped. So, of course, I would recommend it because it's really important to be able to take hold of your own life and not just be there, you know. Um, so, most definitely would recommend it. I mean, I feel fine right now. I can't tell you what it's like a week later. It's just unbelievable. Unbelievable. I can't thank you enough, Dr. Maskin. And really, anybody should try this. I know that I'll be recommending anybody that I run into that has any kind of dry eye problem to you now. Absolutely. Well, we're going to hopefully uh, encourage our colleagues around the world to to jump in there and start to offer this procedure to their patients uh, to really um, make it a, a dramatic and quick impact on their dry eyes. Yeah, I think that's really important. I wish everybody the best and as much success as I had. It's just phenomenal. Thank and you. Now you know now you know some folks in Japan. So if your friends yes. contact you and they have dry eye, you can encourage them to absolutely contact yes. their ophthalmologist. Yes, yes, yes. Good. There's okay. a solution. Thank you. You bet.